Have you had the pleasure of seeing my kid naked? Have you seen Christian naked yet? <laughs> do you know um, why you I do really this? try to avert my eyes when they're in their towels. So <laughs> I, I can honestly answer no, I haven't. And I hope to keep it that way. <laughs> Your mom is a podcast. In case you didn't know, seriously, Lisa, <laughs> that's the whole thing that we're doing. <laughs> this is a podcast called Your Mom. You know that, right? Yes. Okay, we're still doing it. Your mom does a podcast. Yes. Yes, and yeah. that, that's what this is. Ashley Adamson and Lisa McCaffrey. Where I only did it so that my kids can, when they are asked, they're like, yeah, "Your mom does a podcast." That's that's the only your reason. Mom does a podcast. Your mom for does that, a podcast just for the comebacks. <laughs> It's the only reason I said yes. Oh, to The whole reason that we are still doing this and showing up. Yeah. Uh, however you found us, we are glad that you did. We are glad that uh, you are here and that you are alive. Yeah, I'm glad that you're alive. Sure. Like, truly, even if I don't know you personally, like I'm glad you're alive because you must be a good person if you're listening to a podcast about moms. So great job. Congrats on your life. Uh, we have an amazing guest today, Lisa, first official guest of season two, which mm -hmm. is a big deal. And I don't want to like belabor the point and do some big long intro because I want to cut to the chase and get her on. But really quickly, you are fresh off a trip to Nashville and you are okay. looking super fresh. Can you just give us like the highlight? How highlight. I went to the Grand Old Opry, huge bucket list item backstage Grand Old Opry. Okay. And then I know nobody's listening. Well, maybe if there's some older people listening to this, we were riding the coattails of Sean Cassidy, who like literally my first crush. And ironically, he just put out a wine called My First Crush. That's his wine. How cool is that? And he was literally like everybody in the 70s. I was a little, a little young to be obsessed with him. So I, it was more an older friend of mine that I thought was the coolest thing ever was like obsessed with him. So I had his poster up in my room and I remember all my family made fun of me, but I got to meet him, meet his, um, oh my gosh, his wife. I think I'm more in love with his wife now than him. She was so- It's cool. usually how it goes. Yeah, it was so fun. We were literally backstage. I have like, you know, um, video of us being backstage in the Grand Old Opry. Like who would have th thought that I would ever get to do anything like that or something? It was- it was That is so awesome. Did you, did he tell you that you were his first crush and that the wine- Well, I think now you? at this rate, I'm going to be his last crush. His, oh, oh, that's, oh, good. that's the yeah, next- the last That's crush. the next vintage. Oh, He's, I yeah, love that. He was so good. You guys have to- if anyone out there go to his concert so that's awesome that's, that's a great it. bucket list item that's always good to check off bucket list items yeah um okay here's the deal i i got asked this the other day what is the most rewarding part of your job as a sports broadcaster and there's probably a million answers for that but the biggest and most simple answer is the dear friends that this um crazy career has led me to lisa you are obviously very very high on that list and our guest today the one and only Kate Rooney is also right up there at the very top. Uh, I'm somebody who I met through work, and then she became one of my closest friends. Kate and I started working at the Pac-12 Network when it launched 11 and a half years ago, wow. and she is now a sports anchor at Cron, based in San Francisco. She covers the Niners. Go Niners. Playoffs, baby. First and you team. do an amazing job, Kate. It's so she gets to interview her son, Christian. I know. And when I'm there, I look for you on TV to try to find, because you have such great stories. But yes, it's Aww. so, it's awesome. Yeah, you do such a great job. Such a great job. Thank you. Such a great job. Kate Rooney, Thanks. welcome to your mom. And I should also mention, you have two absolutely adorable children, Harlow and Brady, who are at school right now. Uh, but you've found some few minutes in your chaos of your day to join us. So thank you. It is good to finally have you on this thing. I, it's amazing to be on. I've listened to every episode. I'm such a huge fan of what you guys do. And so it's kind of crazy to think I never thought that I would actually be on it. So I'm really stoked, really it's, excited to get to talk. It's awesome to have you on. And I feel like there's, I was, we were going over stuff of like, okay, what are the topics that we want to hit? Cause there's 800 different things that, that, and stories and all sorts of I have a question. Which, which was your first what favorite episode that you listened to since you said you listened to all? Great question. Thanks, Ashley. Ooh, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I think it was the first one because pretty much right after you guys launched the podcast, I asked Ashley if she could connect me with you to get oh. you on my show. Yeah, you were one of my best guests last oh. season. Um, but the one that I always think about is Steph Curry's mom, Sonia Curry, because, you know, he's someone that I cover too, and I've always admired him. So it was so interesting to kind of get a different like perspective into how he was raised and what his mom thinks about him. And she said a lot of kind of profound things that I think about sometimes. Still, Same. So. She, was, yeah. she was unbelievable. Yeah. I read that podcast a lot. I really do. Yeah. And her book, because I ended up like 
listening to her book when I was driving right before that 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 podcast, and it was it's really good. You should. Read funny. Do you remember Lisa? How nervous we were yeah. before we interviewed her because she was the first guest that we had that we had, neither of us had any connection to her. We kind of cold called and couldn't yes. believe that she actually was going to show up and do it. And we had both read her book in which, you know, she was like very strict. She talks about what a strict mom she was. And so we didn't know how it was going to be. And then it was like, she was a dear old friend who was yeah. hilarious and awesome and so delightful. And I just, yeah, that was so one of my great. favorite ones. Good answer, Kate. Good job. I'm glad it, hey, you Lisa passed. wants receipts to make sure. That, yeah. Yeah. I just want to say. <laughs> uh, but I want to real quick, I want to give some more background, Kate, on, on your journey and your story. So you grew up in San Francisco. You're one of the few like SF natives who is, is now back in the Bay Area. You we're in Boston the same time I was for undergrad. You have a degree in musical theater from Boston Conservatory of Music. Wow. Conservatory of Music. So she's a thespian. Oh my Lisa, God, that's impressive. With, with an amazing voice. Yes, very serious thespian. So I'm going to probably drop a lot of Shakespeare it's quotes neat. on this podcast. I'm not sure if you guys very know right. that. Dude, this podcast um, in Old English for it to honor. Should, you know, oh, background. yeah, that's a great Let's idea. Vow. <laughs> vow, a lot of vows, please. Out, out, brief candle. Life's a walking shadow. And we can have Ed read The Raven from because he knows it from memory. That's yeah, a I think that's a great idea. Oh, that's great. Yeah. You really do need to do that and post it be somewhere. Sick. That would be the best piece that of That would content. go viral. That would be that a word. I mean, yeah. go viral. Right next to Nick Bosa's workout regimen. That would be, that's, <laughs> put your hands together. Coming up with all sorts of he could be vo- He could be reading The Raven while Nick Bosa is working out. Oh that, my gosh. I think Nick is, Bosa wow. could be working out to him reciting The Raven. Man, we'd win the Super Bowl for sure. Wow. We should just end this episode because right, I can't. Right? We're not going to talk about anything better than that. I'm gonna, and I'm not going to be able to think about anything other than that. Wow. <laughs> I know what I'm. Uh, okay, but you then you are very educated, Kate. So not only did you go and get your undergrad in Boston, but you got your master's then in broadcast journalism from USC, which so Lisa will read. forgive you for. I don't even know if you yeah. knew that, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> we forgive her for that. But one of your, like yeah. you said, I think one of the first jobs you had, I don't know how many you had before you, you got your, I think you were production assistant at Pac-12 when we first launched. And the story of how you got hired is kind of epic. Can you, can you share that briefly? Because this just goes to show all the young aspiring yeah. broadcasters out there, there's a million ways to get into this business. Uh-oh. <laughs> I found out about three years into my tenure at Pac-12, things were going great. You know, I I felt like I was doing a good job. I'd gotten a promotion. I'd gotten, you know, a couple salary bumps. And then someone let it slip that I got hired by accident. I was never supposed to get hired. my birth. Here I thought, wow, I'm one of like thousands of applicants who applied to work at this new network and my resume shot to the top. Turns out, and I had an interview and everything with Leon Schweier who uh, ran stuff over there when the network first launched and just an incredible man, really kind of like a pioneer in this industry in lots of ways. Um, But Leon apparently mixed up his Kates after our interview. I thought that our interview had gone so well, but I guess he didn't think so because he meant to hire a different Kate. And when I showed up on my first day, he behind the scenes was like, who's that? (laughs) But they kept that under wraps for years. And then finally, I guess when they decided that I had passed the test or whatever, Someone dropped that little tidbit of oh information my and kind of like gosh. wildfire. Where is that Kate now? Her. That's what I was gonna oh, say. I, you yeah. don't know her last name. I know. Oh. I feel bad for her. Oh, I'm finding her. Oh, oh, I'm gonna do some reconnaissance on the internet. Oh, I'm going. Your to- name is Kate, and you interviewed for a PA position when the Pac-12 Network launched. Just know that you wrongfully did not get the job. Wow. You should have got. If you've been feeling bad about yourself scandalous. since then, well, that job should have been yours. I hope you're a CEO somewhere. <laughs> she like probably that. is. She thought, but that was how. I mean, that that story is a true like microcosm of how the network was when we first launched. It was freaking chaos, and it was like, okay, there's a warm body and somebody who's gonna <laughs> let's go. Like our good friend Molly, she came in. I think she just came in for like an interview. What was her story? She was visiting San Francisco. She walked in off the street and handed her resume to someone at the front desk. And they were like, I think you can interview right now oh if you gosh. want. So she did. Yeah. Hired her but on she the just spot. stayed in San Francisco. She, she just like had, had some stuff shipped up and just stayed. So yeah, it was, it was yeah. wild. Those early days, we could do it again, like an oral history uh, of insane. the first couple of years of the Pac-12. It was, it was awesome. Um, but I'm curious, kid, I don't know the answer to this question. Like people always ask me like, oh, you must have loved sports growing up. What, how did you get into this industry? Why? I don't know that I know that answer for you. I know obviously you're a, you're a sports fan and I know that you were also most improved in your middle school basketball team. That was one of your career yeah. accolades. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Said Congrats. Yeah. yeah, and that's about as far as my athletic career went. I mean, everyone always assumes that I was an athlete like you, Lisa, or like you, Ashley. I mean, you, you were an athlete too. 
I was decidedly no, unathletic. You improved. Um, you I just didn't stick with it. It sounds like you were really good. I improved, but I didn't. Once I won that trophy, I was like, That's the pinnacle. Like, like what else is there to win for real? Like, seriously. Come on. Yeah. So I, I decided that I needed to then start winning at theater. Um, no, but I, I was always interested in journalism. I started doing my school paper when I was. Um, a kid. I, even before that, when I was in elementary school, my mom saved some school projects of mine where I was like writing in the voice of a broadcaster. Like, this is Kate Rooney live from San Francisco where we just had an earthquake, <laughs> things like that. Um, so it was always like a role playing thing that I did kind of. And then my dad, I'm an only child, my dad's only kid. So one of the ways we bonded was watching games together. Mm -hmm. I grew up in San Francisco at a time when the 49ers were incredible. My dad loved the Giants too. They had a lot of success in the 80s. And um, we would do that together. And so it was just something I loved. And when I went to musical theater school, in a way, it actually, it, you would think it would be the opposite because sports and musical theater aren't necessarily things that people think of going hand in hand, but it kind of became this thing that was like mine alone. No one else really cared about sports. So I just became almost more obsessed and I read all the content I could. I subscribed to Sports Illustrated. I watched Sports Center all the time. And um, a couple of years after I graduated, I just thought, man, this is really the career path that I should have wow. taken. So I decided to go back to school and actually pursue it. I'm so That's glad. I am so glad that you did too. And and what's crazy, Lisa, I tell, you know, young people all the time that come in and, and have worked at, you know, various places that I've worked that come in uh, in a production role or behind the scenes or in a producer role, a lot of them want to be on the air. And it's like, okay, let me try and get my foot in the door. And I always say there's only one person I know who actually was hired to not be on camera, who then parlayed that into an on-camera position. And that was Kate Rooney at the Pac-12 Network. So you you worked in the bullpen, like you were a production assistant and a producer for what was that like three years? Yeah, I mean, but two things. I think that was like kind of a function of what you talked about—the chaos of yeah. Pac-12 Network. They thought they, they, thought they were hiring a different Kate to come on the Actually, air. Actually, you were on the air, and yeah. then you clean up after at night, right? You yeah, exactly. clean up. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, that, and also, I just wasn't the best producer. I wasn't a very good production assistant. Um, they moved me from like cutting highlights and things like that pretty quickly to doing graphics, which was a good position for me because I, I really enjoyed as a journalist, attention to detail and, you know, getting words right. Um, so that was a good position for me. So I did, I did much better there, but if I had been a really great producer, I don't think they would have necessarily wanted to let me, um, audition so for the, producer, the They wanted you to go on the air basically. Exactly. They're like, God, we got to figure out a way to get her out of here. Uh, let's, let's just let her do this on air thing. So yeah, I, I mean, it was a crazy story. And I, Ash, I mean, you're, you're right. I, there aren't that many people who've gotten to do it. I'm incredibly lucky in that way. All the chips fell into place. And I was lucky to have you and other people there who really, really encouraged me. I probably owe you some back wages because you've given me so much That's like free why I brought you on today advice. I wanted to talk about the back wages <laughs> but Kate you're like a natural on air because you you I think it must stem from your theater background because you're so poised that's the perfect word I'd say every time I watch you you're just you are and even now you're like poised like I can't stop moving like I have whatever but you're just like so graceful and poised and it kind of makes me mad like like What's up, <laughs> please? Can you speak up? Well, I'm gonna have to stop. Oh, God, I need, I need to. If it makes me feel better, one time I like tripped at a press conference and fell and knocked over my camera. And yes, good. That makes me feel so way better. Like yes, voice, good. So. And ruin the shot, right? I hope. Yeah. <laughs> ruin the shot. The athletes and the coaches right. all laughed at me. Um, good. So, now I feel yeah. better. Now I feel exactly. like I can talk to you. <laughs> Be honest, Kate. Like I know Christian kind of joined the team mid-season last year, and like deep down inside, you know, oh, he's cool. He dates this, you know, he's engaged to like Olivia, who she's legit cool. But he like he is literally a nerd, a dork at heart. Does he get bullied behind the scenes? Be honest. Come on. <laughs> That's actually really funny that you phrased it that way. Um, I, so far, I've not seen any bullying incidents. But a few weeks ago, I was interviewing Kylie's yeah. check yeah. at fullback. And I, I asked him, who's the biggest nerd on the team? And yeah. he, right away, without even skipping a hundred percent, yeah. Um, he said, Christian's the one who's, like, hitting the books Such all night. Yeah. Just studying, and, like, dumb stuff. I mean, he's he's but I've been, I was really surprised by Christian because I met you first through Ashley mm -hmm. before I met him, briefly. But, you know, I thought Christian, okay, he's Lisa McCaffrey's spawn. He's going to be, like, a huge goofball, like, another George Kittle, class clown type guy. And he could not, I mean, he's so serious, he's so nerd, stoic. Yeah. 
Um, but if you get him away from yeah. the cameras, so, though, he will loosen up. He will, if you get him away, he's, yeah, he's kind of like in a bizarrely funny, like you have to like sit there and you're like, oh, that was, you know, that was an off comment. You gotta really listen, but every yeah. now and then he'll make a joke That's and you're like, problem. Whoa. It's your problem because you don't listen. No, no, I'm kidding. But no, he is. He's, I'm kidding. <laughs> he's, an, he's definitely a nerd. You think being a nerd like that, he would have graduated from Stanford, but no, he dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you get that in every he's time. Too, That's the only thing that we can say, right? Like he was too good for Stanford. Exactly. He was like, yeah, he had to go do something harder. else. So he had to go. Exactly oh, right. he had to learn Kyle Shanahan's offensive scheme. That right there shows you he can harder exactly than Stanford, way harder than anything. Probably. Stanford. <laughs> Kate, I'm curious for you. Like you grew up a Niners fan, right? And now you get to cover that team. And be, I know you're going down to Santa Clara later today, and and you're in an amazing time to be covering this squad because they're they have what I think is the best player in the NFL and uh, <laughs> Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> and I I think about the fact that like I mean I grew up cheering for the Broncos and what it would be like to cover them. I know it changes once it's your job, but like, what is it like covering a team that you have a huge affection for? Is it, are you, yeah, you probably are now a fan of a different team after meeting them, though. You're like, wait. Not that yeah, well, <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, if anything, Lisa, like, I am a bigger fan of them. I, I don't know if that's a weird word to use, but you get to know these guys in a different way. I, I definitely, to your point, Ash, it, it does, it has changed. Um, I don't, you know live and die by their wins and losses oh. anymore. I, I think it's more fun to cover a team that's winning a good team. So I'd say the same thing about the Warriors, the Sharks, the Giants, the local college teams that we cover. It is really fun to cover a team that's doing well. It's much harder to cover a team that is playing poorly. Um, so so that is fun. So in that way, you know, I, I'm, I'm rooting for a good team. But no, I mean, you're not even allowed to cheer in the press box. So first of all, if you were a fan, that forces you to to – approach the game in a different way to start consuming the games in a different way. Um, I was afraid to cover a team that I had loved because I thought that it would, you know, there's that saying, you don't want to see how the sausage gets made. I thought that that's like what it would be like. I thought that it would like turn something that had brought me so much joy over the years into something that felt like a chore that I didn't like anymore. Um, but I just appreciate it in a, in a different way now. And I, one day if I don't cover this team anymore, will I still go back to being a fan? Probably not, not in the same way. Um, but I've gotten to see how wonderful the organization is. I don't really have anything to compare it to. I've never covered any other NFL teams, but, um, you know, they're clearly an organization that people want to play for and, and character is, is obviously important when they're adding people to their roster. And so it's been overall a really great experience. I mean, people always ask me, they want to know the worst thing. Who's the worst player on the team? Who do you hate covering the most? And I honestly do not have an answer to that question. There's no one who's been anything other than, gracious and thoughtful when it comes to their time with the media. I mean, some people might have their moments, but for the most part, everyone That's there is good. Have you ever slipped in the press box and like cheered on accident? Cheered? I've heard stories of Not reporters yet. like accidentally cheering and everyone looks at them like they're the worst person ever. So let them oh, slip. Yeah, no, that, actually, yes, people do look at you like yeah. you're the worst person Explain ever. Explain what it's like to be in a press box. And it's it's quiet. You're not allowed it's to do reporters for both sides, reporters for both teams. So yeah, it's, there are. And so, I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say it's fun. Like you definitely, I, I also, I don't know what this says about me, but I'm like at a part of the Niners press box where on your average week, I really don't have anyone sitting around me. I'm like right in front of the 49ers PR people in the row below them. And then there's usually no one really to the left or right of me. So I don't know if the other reporters said, <laughs> we really don't want to sit by her. Please put her in her own section down at the other end. But I don't have anyone to talk to during the game. So even like if there's a weird play or like a streaker <laughs> runs on the field, which has happened before, I'm just kind of like, Haha, self, that yeah. was funny, wasn't it? <laughs> so you get used to watching the games in these total wow. solitude. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just such it's a different, different experience. Yeah, from like, that. yeah, It's actually not kind of nice to sit by yourself in a press box because there's the other experience, which is you've just got people sitting next to you who will not stop talking. Oh, wow. And that is hard That's because true. you're like, I actually do. And I feel Isn't like I'm being rude. But I'm like Aren't you not work. supposed to talk to each other because you're supposed to, everybody's supposed to take in their own experience? And well, like, I, feel, yeah. well, I mean, make little asides here and there, you know. Yeah. But I've yeah. never been invited um, to a press box. That's so weird. You're okay. Yeah. It's okay. Well, <laughs> I don't think I'd last a minute. Yeah. You would not last. Yeah. You would be out of there. You I, would, I don't think. Picked out. Yeah. I know my limitations. 
<laughs> you made a point that I think, Lisa, you actually do have some context to, which you don't. You said you don't have anything to compare it to in terms of how good the organization is. But when we had Cheryl Bosa on last year, she talked about she's she had a different touch point of a different organization, the other team that her son, another team that her son played for. And she said, it's not even like, I don't want to compare this, but just the Niners, they do it differently. They operate differently. And I, Lisa, you obviously through Ed's career and you've been around a lot of different teams and Christian started with the Panthers. Like, would you say that you feel that too and see it? Like it's, it's a diff it, not all NFL teams are created equal in terms of. Right. It's unusual. Right. You think they're all even and, you know, they all have the same salary cap and whatnot, but no, it is a death. It's a completely different experience at, I think, every single team. And um, yeah, I've benefited um, from going to a dolphin game too also, but the 49ers, from the and I believe after experiencing all you know the few teams I've been able to uh, be a part of or you know have my kids be a part of, um, it it starts on the top. It's the um, owners, then the you know the the behind the scenes people, and and they have just such a classy organization. They care about the players. They care about the players' families. They make you feel a part of it, and it's it's and that that trickles over to the players and makes them be able to play at their best. You know, you they, they couldn't be nicer and open arms and warm to the to the players. And that is something I mean, I personally really appreciate, um, you know, anytime my other my boys come in town, they're like, Oh, get them on the field, we'll get them, you know, make sure they get them good seats there. They are so wonderful. They are amazing. And, and that I think really does make a difference. And it does, like you said, it makes people want to play there. Um, besides the great schemes and the great coaching. Um, it does, it makes people want to be there. Because I mean, if you look at it from a money point of view, I, the taxes there compared to like a Florida team are, are pretty high. I mean, I don't want to get involved in that, but you know, you could make significant more money playing for like a Florida sure. team if that was an option to, to go between the two, but people still choose to go there because of the coaches, because of the system, because of the owners and um, the organization. And, and that really does make a difference. And it is, I can attest, it's one of the, it's one of the best teams to play for. So it's wonderful. So very appreciative we're there. That's for sure. Appreciative that Christian's there. So it's fun. Yeah. I love hearing that. Great that's that's covering, yeah. Great yeah. covering the team. Um, and I'm glad he's not getting bullied. I'm really glad. He's oh, yeah. bullied. Although I think it's when the reporters. <laughs> not while we're in there. I don't know. I can't speak to what happens when 80 hours over. Well, that's good. Uh, I think one of the other things, Kate, I would love to talk to you about, because I'm sure there's plenty of, you know, uh, aspiring broadcasters who have found this episode and are listening to it. And, and I think there's a few different ways we can look at it. One is I would love to know, like, your advice to people who are getting into this industry. Um, and in, then specifically, I think women and, and such a key part of, I mentioned it off the top, like one of the best parts about this job is meeting like people who are going to be my lifelong friends to include yourself and the, the importance of women supporting women, especially in a sports, you know, focused journalism and broadcast career, um, why that is so important, how you have felt it and how you now continue to like, think about helping pull up the women who are coming behind us. Cause I think to me, that's a huge part of what we now get to do. Well, it's so funny. I, I'm sure every woman who's starting out in this industry or who's interested in the industry, hears like cautionary tales from about how women in this industry don't support each other, about how everyone's so catty. You have to look out for yourself first. I have had the complete opposite experience. I mean, I can honestly say that I have not met one woman in this industry who wasn't supportive, trying to elevate other women, I've gotten, I got my current job because another woman in the industry put in an, a, a good word for me, essentially. Um, the, and like you said, I've made some of the best friends in my life. My wedding was half filled with women that I've met in this industry. Some men too, but more, more women than men. I, I think if anything, the reputation that women have for being catty in this industry, it's the complete yeah. wow, that's opposite. Really refreshing. That's no so nice to hear. As an of group of women. Yeah. Industry. Yeah. And, and I will say having experienced the musical theater world, that is really? not true there. There's a ton of- Wow, all those like glee people and, are like, <laughs> wow, give me more. Well, we'll talk some stories about that off camera, but um, <laughs> but no, I mean, so it, another industry that has that reputation and it is true, and this industry has that reputation and it could not be further wow. from the truth. Um, so I maybe it's the generation that we are lucky enough to be in where we've kind of seen women have to struggle to prove their worth and it just is tough to see that. Um, but no, I, the, I'm always, we're always still outnumbered in every room. So I'm always thrilled whenever I see a new female reporter that I haven't met before. And we always have like an immediate way yeah. to bond. There's no awkwardness 
how do I figure out how to introduce myself to that person? You can immediately just say, hey, I'm so-and-so, like, let's connect and let's try to help each other out. That's great. Wow, that's yeah. really refreshing as an outsider to hear that. That is, that's pretty amazing. Congrats. No, and I I, I echo that. I think, um, you know, it's it's certainly, I'm sure there are other people who've had different experiences, but I, I have been super lucky in, in the women that I've been able to work with and around who have just been fantastic in every single way. And it is, it's it's not what you probably hear and believe and, and think is true about, about this business uh, because of some of the stories that are out there. But I, the, the other story that I'd love for you to tell, Kate, um, and I just remember being so in awe of you. So you, you get married and you get pregnant what? and you did not have a full-time on-air job at that point, but you had been interviewing for one. So like, this is again, another thing of just, this isn't usually how it goes, but you made it happen. So, so tell us how you got the job at, at Cron and like what that moment in your life was like. The third time interviewing for Cron was the charm for me. I really wanted to work in local television in my hometown. And, and at the time that I first applied, those jobs were like unicorns because people would get in the heyday of sports broadcasting. If you were lucky enough to get a sports anchoring or sports reporting job in a big market like San Francisco, you never left. People did it for 40 years. There were never openings and they would certainly never go to, you know, someone who had never really worked in local news before. And I, I had it. I was lucky enough to weirdly start my career at the network level. So I didn't really know what local news was or how to do it. Um, but I applied for the job at Cron because I'd been freelancing for three years, like Ash mentioned, and I had some great opportunities. I was lucky to work pretty regularly, but I was pregnant. And so I just thought I need to have something more stable. I, my husband had a job with health insurance and everything, but I just, I didn't love the idea that like, one thing when you're freelancing is you, you kind of feel like you have to say yes to every single job. And you might, there might be long stretches where you don't have a day off um, or you can't, you know, take a vacation or something like that. So I thought that if I had a full-time job, it would be better. So I interviewed um, at Cron right after I got married. They ended up hiring someone else. A couple months later, that guy got fired for making a racist what? comment on air. I can say oh. that's something I would have never done. So um, I applied a second time for that job. Unfortunately, when I applied the second time, the guy, I, I talked to the boss, the news director, he was like, this is great. Yeah, I remember you from last time. Come on down. Like, let's have an interview. It, it was feeling really good. I was seven months pregnant, though. So I showed up with this huge pregnant belly, and he was like, hi. And mind you, this was for... A, a job hosting the show that I currently host, a, for, a weekly 49er show. And I was due September 5th. So I would have missed NFL season oh in its gosh. entirety. You should have just told him you were just gaining a little weight. You just. Yeah, I just like, I've just been watching so much football right. that I, you know, to prepare for this that I stacked it. <laughs> I remember talking to you right before you went in for that interview and you were like, I'm just going to go in. I'm not, I, they don't know. I'm just, I'm just going to go in. And it is what it is. And I was, I remember being like, damn it, you are freaking awesome. Like, I love you. <laughs> I didn't know what else to do. I just, I thought you, yeah. not. And it's, it yeah. took some, you but, know, and it, but that was exactly what you should have done. Okay. So keep going. So you go in and, well, and I mean, show up. Seven months pregnant. extremely awkward. I, you know, I mean, you can't, you can't discriminate against someone for being pregnant. And I would never say that about my current employer because they've been incredibly supportive, but they were hiring someone to host a football show and I was going to miss <laughs> football season right. in its entirety so <laughs> makes sense we're gonna that that time I like to think it wasn't about my qualifications yeah. but then um a year later I was in a tough spot with my freelance career because one of my most consistent jobs was a network called Comcast Hometown Network it gave a lot of people in the Bay Area their start including Kate Scott who is now yeah. killing it in Philadelphia um and some other people as well and um I worked there very consistently for several years but it shut down just a victim of, you know, the broadcast industry changing and not making as much money as it used to. And that was when I was about maybe six months pregnant. And again, <laughs> clearly being pregnant like that is not a good time to look for a job. So, and PAC-12 also was shut down for the summer. It was summertime, so I wasn't working at PAC-12. So I had a lot of time to sit around and think about how I wasn't working and I didn't know if I was ever gonna get a job again once I had a baby um, and how I'd made all these awful career choices. And you can also, you can't stop having sex. Like that's yeah, the that was her problem. Yeah, come on, Kate. Like, well, there's one way to solve yeah. that. I mean, Lisa, yeah. it takes one to know one. Lisa has four kids. I mean, seriously, so, I mean, yeah, that's what. Yeah, exactly. Look who's talking here. Yeah. I mean, calm um, down a little bit. 
kidding. Joke. I mean, have you seen my husband? He's <laughs> is he hot? Oh, let's see. Yeah. He's the babe. <laughs> He's hot. So, um, but no, I saw again two months old baby. Not a great time to apply for a job, but I just thought, let's go for it again. That the person who had gotten hired when I was seven months pregnant ended up leaving to go work in tech because um, lots of people do. You're, you don't make a lot of money in this industry, so she decided to take a different career um, tactic and. This time I finally benefited from that. When yes. I called the guy, he was like, this is clearly meant to be. I haven't even posted the job yet. Oh, wow. You, Good. You're in, you're basically. In. He was like, I'm going to like post the job for two weeks because we have to do it from a legal perspective, but the job's yours and I'll send you an official offer as soon as I can. So it was tough starting that job when my daughter was two months old, but at the same time, it was good for me because I had been going through a really hard time postpartum. Um, and that was a surprise to me. I had always wanted to have children so badly that I thought that it would be amazing and I would love every single second of it. And I didn't. And so the realization that I didn't love it was even harder in a way. Like, am I a bad mom? Yeah. What does this say about me? Am I ever going to like being a mom? Um, and going back to work is what made me fall in love with being a mom because it yeah. brought me back, you know, some sort of autonomy. I was able to have that thing that was just myself. And then it was so exciting to come home every night and see my little baby daughter and spend the time that I had with her. So it really just changed everything for me in that way, both in terms of my career and in terms of parenthood. Um, so, you know, I, I think a lot of moms struggle with, with going back to work and how hard that can be and how awful our um, system is here in terms of supporting mm -hmm. parents. But um, for me, it was really the right decision. And so it, I guess sometimes I would say to women, it doesn't always have to be the scariest thing in the world. It can be a really, really good thing. Cause when you're a mom, you just lose so much of your autonomy and, um, working is a great way to get it back if, if that's something that you want to do. That's yeah. awesome. That is that great. is awesome advice. And I think, again, you, you're so in it. And I remember, you know, I think a lot of women experience what you talk about. There's a reason postpartum depression is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And to, you know, if you're experiencing it, like it, it is, it's a real thing. It's normal. Like there's, and there's help and you can get help and there's a bunch of different ways to, to but admitting that you're there, yeah. I think is really hard. Oh, many people, I wish somebody, I wish I knew that. I wish I had talked to you when I, right after I had babies, because same thing, you know, you go through that. Did you feel I, that, Lisa? I remember feeling like I'll never be able to leave the house again. Like I'll never be able to leave without a baby. Like I can never have a self. I can never, and it's always about the, the kid. And that's why my kids are so screwed up because I couldn't. <laughs> that's why Christian gets bullied in the locker room. There you go. <laughs> Damn, that's it. <laughs> now it's full circle. Yeah, I didn't. Now I wish I knew. I wish I knew. But that's, you know, that's really powerful that you, that, that really helped you going back to work. I love that. That's awesome. And you had something for yourself, which was really, really neat. What was the weirdest place you ever pumped? Oh God. Well, I, I think I've told you this story before, Ashley. Um, the Warriors, I will, I'm going to give them a shout out. They're amazing. And they had a mother's room oh, right there. Oh, very wow. convenient. You can really That's pump when I was there covering practices and, and games. Um, they had one of their practice facilities. So it was just amazing. Wow. The Niners really wanted to help me, but they didn't have anything like that. And so there, we have a media workspace where everyone goes and writes their stories and files their video after we go into the locker room and, and talk to the uh, athletes and coaches. And there's like a little side interview room off that media workroom where they would sometimes bring players in to do interviews like this, like where they needed a video camera setup. Um, so the the uh, VP of communications at the time, Bob Lang, very nice guy. He's with the Eagles now, um, had little kids himself and his wife had breastfed. So he was excited to help me. And he said, how about we, you go in that room? Um, so I, I said, okay. Um, Is there a lock? <laughs> works. There's a lock. Yeah. Um, we, you know, the, I'm like, sure the camera's off when I'm right, in there. Right. Um, I'm pumping in my car and it was awful. Oh, the car pumps. Yeah. Uh, but one day, because it's there's so much equipment when you pump, and it's just kind of like a lot going on, and you're at work, so your mind's elsewhere. Yeah. Um, and I forgot to lock the door, and another reporter, a young guy, came in no. while I was pumping away, hey. boobs out. Um, <laughs> and if you've never horrified. seen it, like right. I'm assuming he wasn't married, right, and probably didn't have kids. He's not married. Time. That's, yeah. is, I don't know if I can say his name or not. Yeah, you don't is... need to say his name, but I, I do think when you when you haven't seen like what a pumping situation is, it right. can be it can jarring. Be You're like, whoa, oh my god, god. yeah. <laughs> that's that's um, a shit. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> he was lovely. He knew that he was interrupting something he wasn't supposed to be a part <laughs> well, of, and afterwards he apologized. So he didn't just great. stop and stare. So that's good. <laughs> he didn't stop and stare. Okay. So he gets a lot of points for that. And he never asked me about my boobs afterwards. So more <laughs> points for that. Oh, um, God. And 
much of a relationship ever since. But that is definitely my like worst and weirdest. Comments. I wonder where he is now. Hmm. He still covers the team. He's, oh, wow, he stayed with it. He off entirely. Okay, he didn't. Yeah, he wasn't scarred. Love it. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that is one of those things. You're just like, hey, th there's nothing sexual about this because these are just literally they're, it's they're one of the least sexual things. I mean, honestly, at least I'm surprised you were able to have four kids after Ed saw you pumping because it's decidedly <laughs> unsexy. Yeah, I yeah. don't. Me too. Yeah, me too. I don't know what. No, saying. that is amazing. That's <laughs> it's because she's got such great hair. <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but I was actually very good at pumping out milk. That's all I'm good for. I literally, after that, I used to, I, mean, I could do like eight ounces per boob. It was pretty. Oh impressive. my God. Are wow. you serious? I, mean, I don't want to brag or anything, but I'm good. No, you should. I mean, that is, yes. that is brag worthy. That is brag worthy. I had milk pumping out of my boobs for years after. It was insane. Years. Like still, no, don't still do it. Yeah. Well, I'm still breastfeeding. So. I was going to say, well, you still breastfeed Christian, right? I just. I think we should have been on the record. Like you do still breastfeed Christian, like before a big game. Like I said, just at halftime, breast milk's really good for you. It's like, <laughs> kidding. It's so gross. <laughs> nope, not anymore. No. That's the story I wanted to yeah. forget. That would be a great story. <laughs> That would be the coup of the year. I bet you could really make Kate Rooney's career like launch to the <laughs> next stratosphere if you gave her that story, Lisa. I breastfed him till he was 14. That was it. No, I'm kidding. I did not do that either. So. <laughs> oh my God. This is so good. Okay. How old are your kids now, Harlow? They are five and three. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, They're little still. Is the three year old in school like so, any type of school yet or? He's in preschool. He's in um, a little preschool. Most days he's like, I don't want to go to school. You're, you're not, you don't have to go to work. Aww. He thinks if he says it, it'll be true. He manifests it kind of like how you guys manifest stuff here. Totally. Um, but so far it hasn't come to fruition. Right. Well, one day, he might have a day. Loves it. One day. <laughs> they are absolutely adorable. Your kids are, are so stinking cute. And I know though, that it comes with, you know, going back to work, you talk about how it helped you kind of get your identity back, which I think that it was a, that was a great story. I'm glad you shared that. Cause I felt the same way. But it also comes with a lot of guilt and stress and am I doing the right thing? And you're away and you work nights. And I, I know obviously your husband works in college athletics too. So your schedules are like this, you know, Jenga jigsaw puzzle that you're trying to always maneuver. It, yeah. Where do you like what? I don't Maybe the question is like, what's the what's the toughest parenting decision you've had to make because of the job that you have? Or what's the hardest part about trying to, I hate the word balance, but like balance it all. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the good thing about the kids being little right now is that they don't really know any different. They don't have any expectations of what parenting is supposed to look like. This is how it's been since they've been born. They are used to being cared for by other people, um, whether that's family members. We had an au pair for a while, and she still babysits for us. Um, so they're they're really used to us being away. But I have noticed this first year of my daughter being in kindergarten it's getting harder because I've had to miss things. There's school events that I can't go to. There's parent teacher conferences that I haven't been able to attend. And I think that's going to get harder. I imagine that's going to get harder as they get older. Um, and, you know, leaving them is, is always hard. I try to approach it from the same thing I just talked about, like, okay, here's some time for myself. Here's an experience that, you know, a lot of people just are dying for some time away from their kids. Right. And, and I get to have these built in time away when I'm, when I'm on a trip, but, um, you know, it's hard when you're FaceTiming them. They're just like, I miss you. When are you coming home? I want you back. And it, that is tough. It makes you feel like maybe you're not making the right decision. Um, but I just have to have faith that I show up for them in other ways and they will know how loved they are and that they are the priority that we just have weird jobs, my husband and I do. Yeah. They will. I think, that's ex I think that's a great point that I hadn't thought about is like, they don't know any different. This is what their experience is. And I, you know, I always remind myself I lived in Michigan, you know, I was born in Denver, but lived in Michigan when, after my mom and dad split up. I lived in a different state than my dad from age two to 13, like during the most sort of formative years. And we have an amazing relationship, you know, and I am very close to him. And so there's a lot of different ways that it can, it can look different, yeah. you know, and you, yeah, you don't want to miss any time and it, it does get harder. I missed a mother son dance last year. And Lisa actually was the one you really helped me. You were like, it's okay. Yeah. There's going to be other stuff that you will hey, do. This will make you feel better. One of my one of my best friends who lives out there, um, she had a baby. Um, and I think it was three weeks after she had a baby. We're at it. We went to a, we went on a cruise in Europe um, with her and our other friend. And she's like, hey, their baby doesn't even know I'm gone. They could care less. <laughs> they don't know. It'll all be a blur. They don't remember anything until what age? When do you start remembering? They're like five. They, 
five, six. I think it's even older than that. Isn't it like six or seven? Yeah. Isn't that kind of depressing? I'm always like, there's been a couple times where I'm like, make this a core memory. Like, don't. (laughs) It's hard to make this a fun memory. Remember this. Yeah. No, they don't. They're not going to remember anything. You're fine. You're fine for a couple more years. You're good. They won't know the difference. (laughs) I'll never forget. I lived with my brother when I first moved to San Francisco, and my niece, who's now 13, but she was one or two at the time. I got to live with her like in the same and we spent so much great time together and I remember when she was like seven or eight I said yeah that was when I lived with you guys and she looked at me and she's like you guys you live with us and I felt like oh how do you not remember all those like call me maybe dance parties and the dynamite and the like the pizza parties and the oh it hurt but deep wow. down, they know somewhere. Like it matters. There's a somehow. there's a core memory deep down in there that they'll remember. Yeah, I hope so. Feeling the feelings yeah, so. remember. So feelings you're good. good. Um, okay, a couple last things, Kate, because we've kept you longer than I promised I was going to, which I knew was going to be the case. Sure? We always do. Sorry. Who, we always okay. do. Who is? I know everybody gets moments in their career where you like, oh my gosh, in this in sports broadcasting, I should say, where you're like, I can't believe I just interviewed this person or I get to interview this person. I know you've interviewed a ton of people who probably were some of your heroes. I think you did uh, an interview with Steve Young the other day. Did I see that a, or a couple months ago? Yeah. And that's my answer. Okay. I mean, that's, that's the biggest yeah, you're one. From the Bay area, you know, yeah. Yeah. I'm from the he's the quarterback of my youth. I mean, I, I was, you know, he's actually pre-teen. John Elway, right? He's your yeah. He's yeah. your John Elway. Exactly. He's my, yeah, exactly. He's totally. Ash is John Elway. And I know Ash that you have interviewed John Elway. So I'm sure you had a similar experience, but it was just like, you know, when people say don't meet your heroes, pfft, Steve Young proves that wrong. Oh, I love that. Over and over. Awesome, yeah. He was incredible. He took my phone out of my hand upon hearing that my husband was also a huge fan of him without me asking, made a video for him. Oh, he said his what? name. That's he cool. Video. That's really cool. Long. What a stud. And he just, and also was just, you know, I talked about how thoughtful a lot of the 49ers players are in when, when we're interviewing them. And he was just like that. Like, I'm sure he's been asked all the questions that I asked him a million times before. And he made it seem like, Oh, they were great questions that he, you know, was interested in answering. So I can't say enough good things about him. And um, awesome. I've gotten to also interview Joe Montana, Jerry Rice. I just did Eddie DeBartolo last week. Oh. So pretty much like oh. every 49er Legend. connected yeah. person that I grew up watching. It's just been one of the biggest blessings of this job. It's It's been so incredible. And they've all been wonderful. Wow. One of my favorite things about Kate Rooney is there is oh, no boy. one that I would rather do karaoke with. Than, than you. Oh my truly. God, that's a show. We're gonna come from you. And oh I my do God. a lot of karaoke, as you know. Uh, yeah, I know. But you, uh, Kate, has an amazing voice, and what? I remember. I think I think it was you that took me to the Mint uh, karaoke bar in the Castro for the first time. I experienced that glorious place. But I remember Me. hearing you and our friend Jack Ferris sing "Cruising" the Huey Lewis and Gwyneth Paltrow <laughs> duet. Gold. And I remember yeah. just like sitting on a chair, being like. Oh my God, she has a voice of an angel. <laughs> what else is new? When is Ashley, what night is Ashley not drunk? That'd be yeah. a shorter list. Come that on. would be an easier list, yeah. You know Kate Rooney's anthem. Yeah. What? Uh, Pony by Genuine. Oh, game. That thing yeah. comes on okay. and yeah. just like Kate is transformed. Love it. Let's go. For you, I would, is. you came yeah, out and walked them out with me. How fun would that be? Oh my God. I wouldn't be able to control myself in the press box if they came out playing. Yeah, if they ever played that, you would. You would, you would get up and so, Like it takes over your body. Like forget it's just you them. Yeah, forget it. Yeah, game on. Game on. But that's not a karaoke song. I don't. No, I, it's not. But it could be. I mean, in the it right could thing. be. Okay, so what is your best best go-to karaoke song? Yeah, what is it? You know what? I This is going to sound so over the top, but I don't have one because you have to read the room. You got to read the room. That oh, you're wow. In so if you were to do one right yeah. now for us. Yeah. Who would you, what would you say for us? For you guys. Yeah. I've, oh boy. Um, well, you were just talking about Sean Cassidy, Grand Old Opry. Ashley, mm-hmm. I know you've talked on this podcast about how much you love Bonnie Raitt. So maybe um, I would try to pull out like a Dolly Parton classic, like nine to yes. five. Yes. Ooh, that is that good. Is- oh, Kate, that's spot on, man. That is. All right, good. See, yeah. I got to give the people what they want, not what yeah, you okay. want to say, okay. what Here's they want. Exactly. You. You're in the locker room. Everybody's in there. They're doing the interviews after practice. What's your go-to song there? If you were going to break out in song, what would you do there in the um, locker room? Probably E-40, Bang Bang Niner Gang. Get, got done. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Yeah. You win. You are the reporter. Would, of the, you you want it. Just want it all. Whatever it is, you want it. Love it. What that's about when you're pumping? In yeah. the team room. You're I in your I have a tiger. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I could play this game for like another hour. I know, me really too. I think right. You're in the press box. It's quiet. It's the score is zero, zero. The game's just starting. What's your go-to song? Go. Oh, this, this might be a hard one. Uh, the first yeah. one that comes to mind is going to be um, Guns N' Roses, Paradise City. I don't know. Okay, if fair. Love it. Halftime. Halftime. One team's killing the Super other. Super Bowl halftime. Yeah. Oh, Super Bowl, Bowl halftime. Time. There you go. Okay, even better. And you're with Beyonce. Beyonce. <laughs> she's next. Um, I'm thinking it's going to have to be something like really melodramatic, like maybe like Billy Joel, like Piano Man or something like that. Oh, just like, yeah. Something unexpected. Something unexpected. Just fire at us. This is awesome. But just like, a, but one that everybody knows and that everybody's going to like put their arms around each other and like. Exactly. Feel like they're drunk. Start yeah. the fire. Oh, that's a good one. That's oh, the world was turning. Yeah. World was turning. Yeah. You know, that's like the history of the world in chronological order. That song just that's I not. Really that's what the history class. That's what yeah. they taught. Yeah. But yeah. I did yeah. see Billy Joel's last concert at Shea Stadium wow. um, in New York City, and when that song came on, the stadium was like. Rocking. Yeah. Rocking. Like, I was afraid because I was obviously in the upper deck. I didn't have okay. seats or anything. Like, nice. it was shaking. She wasn't backstage like yeah. some people on this podcast. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe if yeah. I had known Lisa back then, I would have had yeah. better seats. Maybe but. if you worked well, a little harder, you'd get backstage. Do you want to sing a t Do you want to sing a little ditty before yeah. we go? Not really. Do, you wanna... um, do I need no. to? Um, what? You don't have to. You don't have to. Let's see. No, I think you have to. This? It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. There you go. It's Christmas. See, I love you it. could tell, you could hear even just from that little note that she's freaking got it. That was, that was perfect. <laughs> so good. Um, good. Kate Rooney, I freaking love you. Really quick, our last thing that we always do uh, on season two, I should say always, this is like our third episode or fourth episode of this season. <laughs> oh, we've done it forever. We always <laughs> do. This is like our thing. Uh, <laughs> moment of gratitude, shout out to somebody or something you are grateful for. Who you got today it's got to be my mom um i mean oh, maureen perfect. rooney this my life would not exist um in its current iteration without her she takes care of our kids at a moment's notice they've helped us out financially when we needed it um my mom is just an angel that my husband calls her an angel all the time and my kids are oh. so lucky to have her and oh. i call her all the time for advice still um and it just I couldn't be more grateful for another human and um, she deserves way more than, you know, this shout out. I, I try to tell her in person all the time. That's one thing I've really learned from you guys. Like tell the people you love how you feel about them. Um, so I try to tell her all the time, but you know, should be known publicly too, how wonderful she is. That's awesome. Perfect. What a great answer. Maureen Rooney, we love you. I've gotten to meet your mom and she is just an absolute angel and delight. And she created the perfect specimen that is Kate Rooney. So <laughs> Uh, what is your favorite thing about your mom? Like what, give me like, what's, what's your, what's her best quality? She is so compassionate. Um, everywhere mm -hmm. she goes, she endears people to her for her, her profession was an, um, ESL teacher. She taught English as a second language. And wow. when I was growing up in San Francisco, we literally could, it was like, Lisa, I bet how you feel when you're out with Christian or Olivia, I couldn't go anywhere without my mom getting stopped by former students. And she oh, didn't always remember them because she had so many students over so the years, many. but everywhere we would go, people would come up to her and be like, teacher Maureen, you, you changed my oh. life. I can't believe I'm seeing you. Um, oh my gosh, that's she's, amazing. She's the type of person who just collects friends. I mean, she, she it's amazing that wow. she has time for me and my family because she's so busy socially. She has so many friends from so many walks of life. So she's just- that's um, awesome. She's popular, man. I just like- I love it. Oh, I know I want to meet her. Bad, I want to meet her. She reminds you me- She's going to a game. Okay, yeah, you bring it game. for sure. If, if you, you love her, out of her element, he's busy watching your kids. Probably he does always text me like, "Go Niners, go Warriors." Yeah. When those teams do well, <laughs> which is really cute. It is adorable. Lisa, do you have a question that Kate should ask Christian? Mm. Oh, um, ask Please. him who. Yeah, here you go. Who's who is the Wordle champ? He or I? Every day we do Wordle instead of talk about nerds. Oh my gosh, I'm embarrassed. But anyway, I guess I'm a nerd. Who is the Wordle but, um, champ? Wordle check in the family. In the family, yes. Okay. Between he and I, basically. Every morning, each of us do the Wordle, and we send it to each other. So ask him who the champ is right now. I'll be very curious to see if he tells the truth. Well, mm. we are going to get a chance to talk to Christian today. He always talks to us on Thursdays. So Thursday, Thursday. Thursday. Okay, okay, great. I'm yeah. definitely going to. I'm sure that conversation is just going to be riveting, yeah. I'm sure all the other reporters will be really thrilled that I interrupted them to get that question in. But <laughs> Really quick. Hold on. Whatever, Christian, no. Inquiring minds want to know. Okay, wait, a better one? I don't know. Ask him if he's like... Well, I don't know. I always like, you know what I like hearing about players, not even just Christian. Like I like to hear about their diet or their regimen or how they get ready each week. I mean, like think about what these guys go through to get ready to play a game, to just get 
bashed and, you know, and taken down and, and, you know, brought battered and bruised. And then what that takes to get them ready for the next week, they have seven days. Sometimes they only have five, but I just, if you listen to some of the, the stuff that they do, it's insane. What Christian does, I, I know it firsthand. It's insane the stuff he does to get ready for the next week the amount of money he spends on his body and the amount of work and effort it takes to get ready for the next game he is i mean all all of them they're all just so dedicated and they have to be in today's day and age like in the people days, really realize it though yeah because in the olden that. days they, ha they had a reputation they would like go out and drink and, yeah. and go crazy and so oh, oh no anyway it's just fascinating it's, it's incredible i don't think people realize that i don't think it's enough attention so you should oh, ask yeah. christian today how many ounces of breast milk is the right amount <laughs> for pregame. I ship them out to him. I put them under over ice and dry ice. How do you ship prepare them it before each game? So yeah, <laughs> and it's the fresh breast milk. Better, the whole so. breast milk feature for Christian. I think it will go viral. Ew. Ew. You can bring another reporter that, that you mentioned who saw you pumping. I mean, there's there's something here. I don't know what it is yet, but there I'm is. feeling well, like- Well, you know that breast milk, they've now of like, you know, we're always like the latest, greatest. It's now considered a huge nutritionally and you can actually buy it. Yeah. You can buy breast. Well, you can buy cow's breast, like direct milk from like, I mean, I guess that's milk, but Isn't that <laughs> and you can get human breast milk. You you can get it. It's in a dry form, powder form, and it's breast milk, which is insane. I, it's it's, I joke about it all the yeah. time. It's like people really do like mix it up with some water and drink. Anyway, that's okay, kind of weird well, stuff. It really is the secret to some NFL player success. They probably wouldn't yeah. be honest with me about that though. If it was. They probably will. I know. I would don't think they want to admit that. So. No. <laughs> Reputation. Uh, Kate Rooney, you're a gift. We yeah. love you. Tell Christian and the Niners we said hi. And you go. Um, well, and I hope, you know what I'm going to manifest? If, if anybody wants to manifest anything, go for it. But I'm going to manifest that we are all going to be together in Las Vegas at the Super Bowl and the Niners are going to be playing in the Super Bowl. That's that's what I'm going to manifest right now. Think that's and I'm going to manifest a win on Sunday. I'm going to take a game at a time. Okay. Beat, beat, beat the oh, that's, okay. So you, one game at a time. One game at a time. Calm down, Ashley. I like what you're thinking, though. <laughs> and I'm going to manifest just a week of uh, great player interviews where they're totally candid with us and, and tell us all about their secret regimens. Perfect. I love it. Um, okay, Kate, thank you. Go Niners, baby. Thank you so much for having me on, guys. What a delight. I'm honored to be on with you, and you make it so much fun. Um, what you're doing is just so special and so unique and so thrilled to be a teeny, teeny, teeny part of it for today. You're a big part of it because big you're probably the only one who's listened to every single episode. So thank you <laughs> no for way. being our number one fan. Uh, and seriously, like this is this is a total gift. It's It's funny when you know somebody for as many years as – we've known each other and all the conversations we've had and all the moments and all the, you know, back and forth support. There's still so many things as I realize when I'm putting this together and hearing you talk that like, Oh my gosh, I don't know the answer to that question. Like yeah. I should know that. And I don't. So it's another reminder, like make a point to, yeah, to get to know, know. and ask, like, you can go ahead. I've learned as I've gotten older, it's okay to ask some deep questions. Yeah. You do that. Yeah. First comes first, keep it on the surface. Your business. Shut up. But you know, that's the yeah. worst thing. But no, I think it's I think it's fun and it's so fascinating. You'll learn so much about people by doing that. Totally. Exactly. Be curious about people. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we will see you next time. Happy holidays to all. It is beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Can we just can you play us off, yeah. Kate? Sing us out. Off? It's the most wonderful time of the year. That's my Bing Crosby impression. So it's good. jingle belling and everyone yelling to be a good cheer. I don't really know the words to that one. I'll see you at a karaoke bar tonight. You want to go karaoke? Yes. Okay. I'll it's see you at Silver Clouds, baby. Okay. Be there. Mwah. Love you. See you next week, everybody. Your mom out.